Hello Year 3. I'm finally going to read you the last of the story of the church mice and the moon. And we'll find out what happens to those dastardly scientists. Now, mice have just been launched into space, or so everyone thinks. But unfortunately, it didn't work and the capsule has landed in the river where Samson found them. All the rest of the day, they drifted slowly downstream. Inside the capsule, the two mice argued about whether or not the moon was further away than London, while outside, Samson was wondering why poets were always writing poems about swans. But at last, just as the first stars were starting to show, Werkelthorpe Church came into view around a bend. Samson swam ashore and hurried to the vestry to round up the rest of the mice. By the time the capsule came abreast of the church, Samson and the mice were ready and waiting. Ever since blast-off, the two scientists had been trying to make the TV set work so that they could see the pictures the rocket was sending back to Earth. They had tried scientific methods, then they had kicked it, and then they had shaken it, and then they had sworn at it, and then they had discovered that it wasn't plugged in. And by that time, the capsule was ashore with its camera pointing at the sky. So the first thing the scientists saw when they finally got the TV going was a picture of the moon. The moon, they cried excitedly. They're nearly there. Back at the church, Samson had decided to drag the capsule into the vestry where there was light to see by as they worked to free Arthur and Humphrey, who were still stuck inside. Meanwhile, the scientists' eyes were fixed on the TV screen. The next thing they saw would have made most people give up science forever. But when they had got over the shock, the two scientists agreed that they hadn't seen what they'd seen, because if they had, it would prove that certain things existed, which every good scientist knew jolly well didn't. But they still had to go out and calm their nerves with a cup of instant coffee and a pork lunch and meat sandwich. And while they were doing this, Samson and the mice dragged the capsule into the vestry and laid it on its side in order to get Arthur and Humphrey out. The TV camera in the capsule's nose now pointed straight at the mice's week's supply of cheese, brought for them by the parson that very morning. When the scientists returned, the picture on they saw on the TV screen filled them with joy. We've done it, they cried. They've landed on the moon. Just look at those rocks. Miles better than the silly old rocks Apollo brought home. Back in the vestry, the first thing Arthur and Humphrey did on getting out of the capsule was to have a quick snack, even before they started bragging about being the first astronautical church mice in history. This nearly made the two scientists faint with delight. It's edible, they shrieked. This is the greatest discovery since non-stick frying pans. Our names will rank with Newton and Darwin and Elvis Presley. There they are celebrating. You can see the mice eating, as they so think, the moon rocks. They telephoned all the newspapers to tell them about their discovery and they invited lots of reporters to come down next morning to see it for themselves on the TV set. The rest of the evening they spent arguing about which of them was the greatest scientist who ever lived, but in the end they agreed that they both were. Never once did they spare a thought for the two mice whom they had bundled off into space and who as far as they knew would spend the rest of their days twiddling their thumbs on the moon. Next morning, after they had read all the nice things the newspapers had to say about them, they were without doubt the two happiest scientists in the world. After breakfast, the scientists started to prepare the conference room and they finished just as the reporters started arriving. The reporters had all brought packed lunches with them because they expected to be there a long time. By 10 o'clock, the room was full and everyone waited eagerly for the mayor to switch the television set on. Meanwhile, back at the vestry, the capsule had been put to one side, out of the way, because things got pretty lively there on a Sunday, just before the morning service began. See all the servers getting ready in the choir, just like we do for our angus. When there was complete silence in the conference room, the mayor made a few brief remarks about man's glorious destiny and the onward march of knowledge, and then he solemnly switched on the TV, saying in a trembling voice, 
Ladies and gentlemen of the press, behold the moon. What they saw was much better than most things you see on the telly, but it just wasn't what everybody had been led to expect. The reporters were very angry indeed, and they put their packed lunches to a use that was certainly never intended for them. Then they rushed off to write extremely nasty things about the mayor and town councillors of Wortlethorpe in their newspapers. Then the mayor said things which can't be printed to the scientists, and the scientists said things which are best forgotten to the mayor, and the result of that was that the scientists were given their cards and five minutes to pack their bags and clear off the premises. Some days later, the mice and Samson saw the two scientists again. Arthur and Humphrey were boring the fur off everybody with yarns about gravitational pull and computerised orbits, while Samson had yet another 40 winks, making a total of 15,320 so far, and it was still only three o'clock when a strange sound from the street brought everyone outside. Stay here. Now, mice don't usually bear grudges, and even though Arthur and Humphrey had been so abominably treated by the two men, they were really pleased to see them getting on in the world and doing something useful at last, instead of wasting their time playing with fireworks. Arthur even suggested borrowing a penny from the Save the Vestry Roof Fund collecting box to give them. But Humphrey very sensibly said that before giving the penny, it would be best to wait until they could play something else besides the first two bars of My Love is Like a Red Red Rose, otherwise they might think that success had come too easily, and stop trying. I hope you enjoyed the story. Tell me whether you did at the bottom of your worksheet.